Well, I'm often asked on this channel to provide some recommendations for people who are new to poetry, who want to learn how to close read poetry, and who maybe are non-native English speakers looking at English poetry for the first time and wondering where to begin. So I'm going to give five books, five recommendations that I think would be really helpful for someone who's new to poetry and really wants to understand how to enjoy it more. Close reading began in the early 20th century with critics like I.A. Richards, uh, F.R. Levis, and to some extent T.S. Eliot. And this movement to close read poetry, which is mostly what I do on this channel, began as a reaction against this mystical and impressionistic view of poetry. Prior to the close reading critics, uh, there wasn't really a clear scientific method for reading poetry for evaluating a poem, for determining whether a poem has any real value. And so close reading critics began to practice this method uh, in England and America predominantly, and this rose to the whole movement of close reading. The most important book for the American tradition, and certainly one of the best that I would recommend to non-native English speakers and anyone who is interested in learning how to read poetry, is Brooks and Warren's Understanding Poetry. Now I have the third edition here, with nice cloth hardback, and this was the standard textbook throughout most of the 20th century. It went through very many editions. And if you were a high schooler reading poetry, if you were a first year or second year undergraduate, this textbook would have been uh, likely what you would have used. This book is important to me. This is how I first discovered close reading. I actually discovered this copy in an abandoned house in the woods in Louisiana when I was a kid, and this introduced me to the first poems of Wordsworth that I ever read and uh, as a method of reading. And so this book here I think is very important. What you'll find in it is not only a general introduction as to what poetry is and how to read it, you'll also find poems. This is actually a small anthology, and each poem often is followed by three or four reflection questions that get you thinking about what the poem is doing. So they have poems from the medieval period all the way up to the 20th century. And they offer commentary on the poems, and they also prompt you to reflect on what the poem's doing. What is tone? How is tone being used here? What is the meter and rhythm doing? What are the words doing individually and synergistically? How is the poem essentially a work of art? So really for anyone beginning, wanting to learn how to read poetry, how to close read poetry, uh, Brooks and Warren's textbook is what I would recommend. Now, the successor to Brooks and Warren's Understanding Poetry would be Helen Vendler's Poems, Poets, and Poetry. And I have the second edition here. There is a later edition. I believe there's, there's certainly a third, and there might be a fourth edition out there at this point. But I have the second, and any edition really will do. Uh, a later edition would be better. But Helen Vindler, who's an amazing close reading critic, by the way, that you'll definitely want to read, she provides, I think most helpfully in this book, on the front flap, a series of questions. There's 13 questions to apply to a poem. You know, on my channel, I have the five steps of close reading, and I've laid out this very basic way of reading poetry. If you apply these 13 questions to any poem, and you meditate upon the poem, and you really encounter it, and you explore it with this guide, then you cannot help but come away with a greater understanding of not just the poem's meaning, but how the poem is a beautiful work of art. Another great feature about this anthology is that it's not just an introduction, it is an anthology. She has poems from the medieval period all the way up to poets who are still living today. She teaches you how to close read. She shows you how to close read. And she also has an entire chapter dedicated to writing about poetry. So I would recommend this to any poetry student that's an undergraduate or even in high school who's competent in the English language and wants to learn how to think, engage, and write about poetry. I often recommend the chapter on writing about poems to my poetry students uh, when I teach at Harvard. We'll sometimes walk through it just to show them how it can be done. It's not a prescription, but it does provide a good model of what, what an engagement, an imaginative and analytical engagement with poetry might look like. So Helen Vindler's book, Poems, Poets, and Poetry, in fact, any book that Helen Vindler has written would give good examples of how close reading works. Next along those lines, 
I have a collection of essays that I really recommend to, to any student of poetry. It's called The Apple and the Spectroscope by T.R. Hinn. T.R. Hinn was an English professor at Cambridge University in the 20th century, and he put together lectures for science students, students at Cambridge who were not familiar with poetry and who wanted to learn about it. And so this book is a collection of his lectures to these students. In each lecture, he chooses two small poems to read, to compare, and to analyze. And these are really beautiful essays on particular poems. From the medieval period, he, he does a Scotch ballad, really all the way up to Yeats, even. And so if you're a student, if you're a reader of poetry, and you'd like to see some good models of close reading, I would definitely check out that book if you can find it. Next, I have a book by an excellent close reading critic, uh, one of the best. He's up there with Helen Vendler. His name's Christopher Ricks, and this is his book, Poems and Critics. It's a small book of 200 or so pages. He has an excellent introduction about literary criticism. So this is for anyone who's interested in not just close reading, but how close reading can be used in literary criticism, which involves not just the analysis of individual parts, but the comparison of the work of art according to principles of judgment. His introduction is excellent. I'll often have STEM majors, science majors in my classes who aren't familiar with writing about poetry. And the assumption is, well, isn't it easy to write about poetry because it's all subjective and you can write what you want? I'll often recommend the introduction of this book that, that Christopher Ricks has provided as a model to show how while the study of literature has subjective elements to it, it must be supported, any analysis or any judgment must be supported by evidence. And that's where close reading comes in and that's where evaluation comes in. So that's what's great about the introduction of this book. If you go into the chapters themselves, you'll find that it contains critical commentary by famous poets and critics on other poems. For example, his first chapter is on William Shakespeare's sonnets, and it just provides examples from critics like L.C. Knights, M.M. Mahood, and John Crow Ransom talking about the sonnets. And they don't all agree. What's fascinating about this collection is that the poets and critics talking about poems are often at odds, but they all use critical methods to evaluate the poems. You'll see, too, famous poets talking about other poets. There's a nice section on John Donne, which includes commentary from Samuel Johnson, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, and the critic Hugh Kinner. On George Herbert's section, we have an example of criticism by Aldous Huxley, uh, William Empson, another great close-reading critic. You'll find commentary on Gerard Manley Hopkins by T.S. Eliot, Donald Davey, two really great close-reading critics. And they're just short, brief excerpts, critical remarks about the poems in the book. A really great resource for undergraduates and anyone interested in learning about how literary criticism uses close reading. Now, the fifth book I would recommend is the, the new Princeton Encyclopedia of Poetry and Poetics. As you can see, it's, it's, it's very large. It's double columned each page, but it's extremely useful. If you ever come across a genre you're not familiar with, like a blazon, you can look in this book and it provides a small encyclopedic entry, really an essay, about the blazon, its history, its reception in literary criticism, and its progression through literary history. Let's say you're curious about the metaphysical poets. If you look under the entry on metaphysical poets, you'll find a really fine essay about the development of the metaphysical movement, its characteristics, its styles, uh, and examples from metaphysical poets as well as critics who have written about metaphysical poetry. You'll also find entries on concepts like the allegory or the imagination, which I find really helpful. So that's another something I would recommend to, you know, just interested readers, certainly students, but also anyone who's new to poetry. You'll find a lot in there, probably more than you need, um, about the topics surrounding poetry and the vocabulary. So those are my five recommendations. I'd love to hear other recommendations if anyone has any others. There are certainly many, many more good close reading critics that didn't get mentioned here, but I think that these five books provide a good foundation for a collection or library of anyone who loves poets. So I hope you found this helpful, and I'll see you all in the next video.